Hey guys, Clever here. I just want to thank everyone for supporting the channel the past few weeks. After changing the show's format and creating the Butthole Show with Gumper, everyone has really been loving the content and that's awesome. As a result, and with the jump in subscribers, I decided to open up the floor to viewer suggested videos. Overwhelmingly, the most requested genre was horror, so I decided to look for a horror game that would freak me out and make for a good series to watch. This led me down to newly released The Dark Inside Me. Unfortunately, for a variety of reasons, the Let's Play didn't quite pan out. As I'd hoped so, I decided I would instead give a quick review on this game and cover the good and not so good parts. To start off, let me tell you this is a one-man project and I love the effort put into certain parts of the game. The music is creepy and very well done. It fits the atmosphere of the game and really gets you in the mood for some frightening, creepy stuff to go down. The intro to this game shows off a gorgeous art style with beautifully rendered sinister visuals and, again, really begins the process of building an immersive experience. However, we don't even make it into the game before some of the issues you will be facing from a gameplay perspective start rearing their ugly heads. I went to start a new game and clicked half a dozen times, but the menu screen won't even let me progress until I had the mouse perfectly over the correct spot on the screen. And it might be my imagination, but it seems to change every time you move your mouse. This would be a minuscule complaint if it was a one-time deal, but this carries over into the gameplay as well. More on that in a minute. I also noticed there was no options menu to change the volume, look at controls, add subtitles, or give any type of insight about the game. But I decided I would let that slide and see if there was an in-game menu I could find. I didn't find one! I quickly forgot about my battle with the title screen and was once again ready for terror to take over once more. Straight out of the cutscene I found myself handcuffed to the bed and as this is a point and click horror genre game which by the way is so hard to do well, I assumed I would need to free myself. Okay great. Let's click on everything. Oh great, just like the menu screen to start the game, your mouse has to hover over the exact pixel of the proper object before it even lets you think about clicking it. See, this is one of the things about horror games that people don't realize. Immersion is the entire key to success in any type of horror game. I can go out and play Cuphead or Battle Block and not be immersed in the game world and still have a good time. But horror games, you need to feel uneasy and you need to actually assume the role of your character or else it's going to fall flat. The frustrating controls really take you out of the game and the mindset you need to be in to deliver the appropriate experience for the players. Tight, simple controls are almost a necessity because you shouldn't be thinking about buttons. You should be dreading what lurks behind the next corner. Take Dead Space or Silent Hills, even PT as an example of this. After freeing myself from the hospital bed, I was allowed to walk around the room to scavenge items laying around. As you can see, the movement in this game is very janky, and it's not very clear as to where and what exactly you need to do. The lack of any in-game tips, which normally I don't mind very much, uh, creates a very confusing start for this game, and by now, honestly, I didn't feel like I was playing a horror game. It felt more like a bad version of Monkey Island or something. There is nudity in this game, which is shown in the intro, and personally, I don't have any issue with that as long as it's done for an artistic purpose. After I disposed of the nurse, however, I noticed something that kind of bothered me. She has her boobs falling out of her shirt, and to me at least, this seemed very unnecessary. Throwing in boobs just to have naked girls in a game feels like a cheap way to garner attention for a game, and frankly, the only reason you would make the nurse needlessly sexy in the first five minutes of the game is to do just that, to get horny teens to buy a game and see some knockers. I mean, jeesh. Every woman has two boobs for the most part. So therefore, there's twice as many boobs as there are men. We're outnumbered and it's overwhelming. We're powerless. 
Anyways, moving forward, I made it into another room and found my escape. A nondescript window in the back corner of the room. Awesome. Let me just hop out and... Oh. Well then. Obviously, I have to do something else. Let's see. I can move the bed. Let's try it now. Okay. Still dead. Well, I have a lighter and beds are flammable. Nope. It doesn't work. Do you guys give up yet? Turns out you have to pour chloroform on the bed to make it flammable and then light up the bed and hop out the window. Okay, fair enough. Convoluted, but I won't peg the game too hard on that. Now comes the part of the game that really sealed its fate in my book. You have to zipline across a wire to escape. Easy enough, but it turns out you have to use the broken controls and click on... Well, actually, I'm not really sure. I know you have to click on something to drop down to the floor before you are impaled by a tree, but I have no idea what. After dying, and this is not an exaggeration, 33 times, I clicked everywhere on screen as fast as I could and finally dropped down to the floor. For a horror game, the mechanics of the game cannot fight you while you're attempting to proceed. I shouldn't have to worry about an in-game mechanic not working. It should be depending on my skill and thought process. I know what people are thinking, though. Clever. Resident Evil is a classic and its controls and camera are brutal. Yeah, but it works with the game. The camera adds to the fear you experience, and the clunky controls will make you panic if you don't take a deep breath and act calmly. Excuse me if I don't draw parallels from a bad camera and clunky controls to being murdered by a freaking tree 33 times because I can't find the correct pixel to click on in the .18 seconds I have to make a decision. I felt zero fear and to be really transparent, at this point I couldn't even enjoy the game because, well, it didn't feel like a game. It felt like a task. By the way, have you ever jumped off a really high surface and hurt yourself? Problem solved, ladies and gentlemen, for the low, low price of two installments of 1999, you can have your own beanbag. Jumping off a skyscraper? No problem. You slap that bad boy down and jump, it'll be like landing on blows made from heaven's clouds, I'll tell you what, I have no idea why it took me so long to realize I needed a beanbag to progress through the game. I just, I just wasn't thinking, you know, golly gee, I mean, it's all about the beanbag! <laughs> huh? Hey, hey, Red, how much is this game? 15 bucks? Okay. Well, I've played dozens of free horror games that control better and provide an atmosphere conducive to being scared in a game. You could have put anything in this game after this point. After I jumped down the beanbag down there, you could have put in the most horrifying, gruesome imagery, as many well-placed jump scares as you want, and it really couldn't have scared me because I was so aware of everything going on in the real world, I might not even have noticed. Oh, look, guys, I, I really don't want to come across as someone attacking the developer, but I can't recommend this game. Hell, I'm not even going to play this game again. It has some good pieces, but there are a lot of basic functions that need to be corrected before I would even consider picking this up again. For all the effort put into the intro and cutscenes, an equal lack of effort was put into the framework of this game. And if they tie in every loose bolt holding this game together, then you may have something worth the price tag. The idea is interesting, but ultimately fails to succeed at the most important components that make games fun, or interesting, or even playable. Alright, I'll see you cats and kittens later. I gotta go to a bonfire. Hey Jeb, did you bring the chloroform? Can't start a fire without it!